Hi, so I am so excited to be here today and to be talking to you about one of my very favorite goddesses, Medusa. So she is so misunderstood and she's so powerful and she's so much fun to work with. And I'm going to actually share a wisdom transmission from her at the end. It'll be a channel transmission. So I don't know exactly what will come through, but we'll see. And so um, stick with me because that's gonna be awesome. Um, but first, I just want to share a little bit about Medusa because she really has been given a bad rap by the patriarchy, essentially, who really used her as one of their tools of suppression. Um, when the patriarchy began to take over control, a lot of the mythologies were changed as a sort of propaganda or gaslighting. <laughs> it served their purpose to take what was the beautiful and powerful mother and other female mother goddess and other female deities and render them um, as subservient, right? Um, to set up a new power structure, right? And to illustrate that this was the way, you know, us mortals were going to live from, from then on with, with men in charge and, and women sort of as submissive, submissive and subservient to them. And so Medusa originally, you know, we have the we ha we have the story of her that you probably learned in elementary school and that you could read about in Edith Hamilton's book, right? And that is that she was uh, given serpent hair, and if she looked at a man, he would be turned to stone. And then, <laughs> you know, Perseus, Athena sent Perseus to kill her, and he cut off her head. He had a special mirror that um, Athena had given him so that he would not be affected by her gaze he's killed he's you know cut off her head and then took her you know serpent haired head back to Athena and it was placed on her breastplate and so what we see here is really you know um the um her power being literally like beheaded right at the throat chakra, right? Like right at the throat chakra, her power was taken from her and her entire wisdom center was dismembered, right? It was, it was, it was disembodied from her. And she was originally a wisdom goddess. And so it was believed that she and Athena and Venus um, were all a part of a triple deity that goes back to the goddess Neith, the Egyptian goddess Neith. Now, Neith was um, a goddess who emerged from floodwaters, and her name means I have come from myself which is really powerful in and of itself, right? And the inscription on her temple reads, all that has been I am, oh, sorry about this. Wait, let me look at my notes. <laughs> I am all that has been, that is, and that will be. I am all that has been, that is, and that will be. Now, there are a few varying translations on that, but what is really notable about that as well is that Christianity actually took that and um, put, it into, was put it into the Bible. Um, in Revelations 1.8, which is the, I don't know the verse um, by heart, but it's the one that is, I am the Alpha and I am the Omega. So that was really sort of taken from her. <clears throat> and um, she, Neoth represented Mother Death. And um, to see her face behind the veil, which was the future, to see her face behind the veil meant that you would meet your death. In Libya, she was known as the goddess Anatha, who was said to have risen out of Lake Tritonis. And that was the known as the Lake of the Triple Queens. The Triple Queens being that triple goddess entity, right, that in Greece became Athena, Metis, and Medusa. So these three triple goddesses, right, correspond to maiden, mother, and crone, wisdom, the three phases of the moon that were representative of the divine feminine at the time for thousands of years, thousands and thousands of years. It was a cycle of life. And it was very common for goddesses to be representative of one of those phases. So Athena was the maiden phase, right? Metis was the mother phase. And, um, and Medusa was the crone. The crone is the was, right? This has been dramatically altered and perverted. Um, but the crone was the wise woman. She was the wisest, right? She was perceived pre-patriarchy to be the wisest of those three phases. She was the one who 
And, and this concept of wise blood is really important to Medusa. So women were, the, their menstrual blood was perceived as being wise blood. It was the source of their power and it was known as wise blood. The name Adam actually means man made of blood and it was really perceived that this was how creation happened. And so with this wise blood, um, Medusa, was representative of it. Part of the snakes as as hair <laughs> was a representation. She was the Amazonian, like the, the Libyan Amazonian goddess, serpent goddess. And um, she represented female wisdom and it was connected to the menstrual blood. Now, in ancient times, men believed that women could, who were menstruating, could turn men to stone, could kill them. Okay, and we have seen this thread continue for a long time. Now it's not alive, you know, today, but it is still within our ancestral lineage because during the persecution, during the witchcraft, uh, the witch trials and the um, inquisition, one of the things that women were persecuted for was forgiving the evil eye right? This is directly related to Medusa. That evil eye was that Medusa gaze that would turn men to stone, that would render them imp impotent, right? And this is like what it all comes down to. It's like rendering them impotent. And so, you know, Medusa, <laughs> she embodied all of this. She embodied all this. She had the wisdom. It was her crown chakra. And the snakes were the divine, representative of the divine feminine and of that same type of crone wisdom energy. Now, snakes were believed way back when it was believed that they didn't die, that they just shed and renewed themselves. That is the energy of the divine feminine. That is the energy of the triple goddess, right? The last phase, the death phase is really a phase of regeneration, restoration and regeneration and then rebirth. And Medusa represented all of this, but when the patriarchy took over, it was the crone aspect of, of women and of the goddess that was the most threatening to them because it was them who, it was they who held the power, right? It was these crone women who held the power. They were making laws, they were governing, they were doing all of this stuff and, um, and, and they needed to be silenced. And so we see a lot of the dark goddesses becoming um, sort of reviled. Like we see it with Hecate, um, she, uh, she uh, becomes a sort like goddess of like dark magic, right? We see it a lot actually across, across the, the you know, spectrum of goddesses around the world even. And so anyway, you know, Medusa, who was originally a very beautiful goddess who was represented with like graceful golden wings and who had really celebrated her sexuality. This is another aspect of the crone goddess because the crone goddess had the wisdom and the power and that sense of security and also was no longer getting pregnant. <laughs> so they could really celebrate and set their sexuality and be in their sexual power. So Originally, um, Medusa was this beautiful goddess and um, one of the Gorgon sisters, like that was a variation of it. She became one of the Gorgon sisters and um, she took a lover of her own free will. She, um, you know, this was, she. it was a celebration of the goddess and the consort. And so this was something that she did. And then as the mythology took root in Greece, it began to, and the patriarchy took hold, right? It began to, to change. And what we see then is that she becomes raped. She's raped by Poseidon, right? And Poseidon um, disguises himself as Hippios, the horse deity. He mounts her as if she were a mare. He impregnates her. She later gives birth to Pegasus. When um, she's beheaded, Pegasus flies out of her neck, which I find fascinating too now that I <laughs> reflect on that. It's like she's still, even in death, she gave birth, right? Which is, is a whole other like layer of power there. Um, and so... Um, at some point then, as you know, that was around 2000 BCE, that that variation of the story hit. And then around the first century BC, around the first century BC, um, there's another change in it. And this change is that Athena now, Athena is like pissed at Poseidon. 
she's mad. And Athena, even though Poseidon had raped Medusa, <laughs> Athena becomes enraged with Medusa for her connection to Poseidon. And so she sends Perseus to kill her. Now this is interesting too, because Athena, right, was Zeus's favorite. And she, you know, <laughs> um, she, she was a, a warrior, a maiden warrior goddess who had no sex, no sexuality. She was very aligned with patriarchal structure and beliefs, right? She was a woman in the patriarchy, right? And she was thriving in the patriarchy and she was thriving in the patriarchy by adopting patriarchal perspective, right? And being of that warrior energy. And so Athena sends Perseus to slay this representation of the divine feminine. Very powerful, most powerful, one of the most powerful representations of the divine feminine with that <laughs> head of snake hair and it being like the uh, this goddess of like deep and powerful wisdom. And so, you know, um, with Medusa, we really see this transition, right? This thing that happened over the course of you know, several thousand years as, as she evolved from Neith and that really, really powerful deity as she went through being the, this powerful Amazonian goddess of, um, of, of serpent wisdom, right? Female wisdom. And, um, and as she became then sort of this reviled and, and decapitated energy. And, um, and so in the reclamation of Medusa, you know, what we are doing here, what we are able to do is first of all, you know, Medusa was, she was condemned for holding the wisdom of the, of the blood, right? She was condemned for being um, in her crone energy, being that part of the cycle. She was condemned, like she couldn't by the end, like she couldn't win, you know, she's raped and then she's still beheaded, you know, and, and, and she's really reflective of, I feel, a lot of what has happened to women in general over the years and certainly reflective of the persecution that women experienced as a result of, of toxic patriarchy um, governance, right? And so um, what I would love to do, I would love to, um, I would love to just bring through uh, a healing transmission, activation, wisdom. I'm not quite sure exactly what it's gonna be. I can feel the energy kind of ramping up though. And so what I would, and, and know too that, and I'm getting this from Medusa, like she's been, she's been with me here, um, is that these, uh, this has all been transmissions, right? There's been healing in the words as they come through me. Her energy is present, it is flowing, and um, and you're receiving, you are receiving from her, you're receiving blessings from her, you're receiving transmissions of wisdom and the remembrance of who you are, right? The remembrance of who you were are before you were told to be something else, before you were made to believe that you were less than holy for being female. And if you're a man watching this, just know that this is a part of your reclamation as well. Um, and, and all of us are together in this. This is toxic patriarchy is not reflective of each of the individual men in it. It is reflective of a societal structure that is no longer working, that, that has survived for several thousand years off the oppression of others, right? So it's not at all about the individuals. Women have been the same, like we've all been, if we're here, we have been born into it, steeped into it, ancestrally, <laughs> you know, um, that all of it's been passed down through the lineage. We are all a product of the patriarchy, right? Like I have been very Athena in a lot of my actions, especially in the past when I was less conscious of this. I really aligned with Athena, um, sometimes even consciously aligned with her. And, um, and so this is something that is, this part of the awakening that's happening right now is that is about us breaking free of this paradigm that has um, that we have all suffered under. And this is men and women. And, and certainly there are some men in power who are very actively upholding the rigid structure of, of the patriarchy 
but most of us are just sort of moving through it, right? And the more conscious we become of the oppression, then the more we are able to disengage from it and live a different way, inviting in an entirely new way of being, a way of being that allows us to live in the remembrance of the power that we are, right? The divine feminine, the divine masculine, right? And so as we work with these goddess energies, we are activating remembrances within us. All of these remembrances, they are within us. They live within our cells. They live within our soul field. And when we activate them, they allow for a shift in our very energy structure. So with that, if you'd like, go ahead and close your eyes and just take a few breaths here. Just take a few breaths and allow yourself to settle into your body. Feel yourself, actually feel yourself dropping into your body, dropping into your root. Feel your breath as your belly rises and falls. And allow yourself here, set an intention, set an intention to open up, to receive this. Imagine your heart chakra right in the center of your chest. Imagine it opening. Imagine it opening and it's, as it opens, it's stretching out to receive the transmissions, the healing that Medusa has for you here today. And imagine now your crown chakra right at the top of your head. Imagine that opening up and allow for the energy of Medusa to drop into your crown here. You might even notice, you might even notice some snake energy here right around your crown. This is activating wisdom within you. So Medusa is coming through here. She's coming through and her transmissions here are about you awakening to the wisdom, the wise woman or wise man that you are and allowing yourself to activate the divine feminine energy of wisdom. The divine feminine energy of wisdom that has been lost, that has been secreted away, that has been suppressed, that has been held down. She is providing you here with an activation of the wisdom of the ages. She is saying the wisdom, the wisdom of the goddess that was later taken and trans, uh, transferred uh, changed and, um, and, 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 and that in that change, in that change, in the perversion of it, woman became vilified. So this is going back to before that here, this is an awakening of the wisdom of your ancestors. awakening of the wisdom of your ancestors along your ancestral lineage and there's an activation coming through here there's an activation coming through here for I am the wise woman and so allow yourself just to feel into that Medusa here is activating on a cellular level here within your body she's awakening co codes source codes she's awakening source codes of that remembrance of i am the wise woman i am the wise woman she's awakening those source codes here turning them back on they've been quieted they've been dialed down she is dialing them back up again i am the wise woman i am the wise woman dear one she is saying to you dear one dear one you are wise your wisdom extends beyond this lifetime your wisdom extends through the ages your wisdom is the wisdom of the goddess it is the wisdom of source energy flowing through you it is the wisdom of your womb it is the wisdom of your heart it is the wisdom of your brilliant mind you have the power to create life within you you have the power to hold the beauty of life within your heart within your arms Dear one, the wisdom of the goddess has never left you. It is still within you, within your heart, within your field. Activate it now, activate it now so that you can remember, so that you can remember the wisdom that you are, so that you can embrace the energy of the divine feminine and so that you can remember, so that you can remember and allow that remembrance to come into your heart. Allow that remembrance to come into your heart and feel it 
Feel it filling your heart up. Feel it filling your heart up. That wisdom activating from within you, from within you, from deep within your cells, from deep within your soul field, allow that wisdom to activate within you. You are the wise woman. You are the wise woman. You were always the wise woman. Let me hear you speak. Let me hear you roar. Let me hear you see, let me see you in all of your glory, dear one. You are the daughter of the goddess. You are the goddess. The goddess, she lives within you. She is expressing through you and all of her wisdom, all of her wisdom, all of her wisdom is available to you. Turning that on, turning that on, turning that on and allowing that activation to hold you within your field, to hold you within your field. Feel yourself being held within the energy of this wisdom and this beautiful cosmic egg of wisdom of divine feminine wisdom this womb of wisdom the womb of wisdom being activated for you dear one you are holy you are sacred you are wise and just allow yourself to feel that landing integrating take a nice breath in and imagine yourself claiming that Imagine yourself being that already, that wise woman within you, activated, empowered, present. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was so beautiful. I'm so grateful to have been able to bring that through. I would love to hear how that was for you. So please share in the comments anything that came up, any realizations or how it felt, um, how it didn't feel, um, any epiphanies from anything that I shared or from the transmission itself, the activation, um, your thoughts on Medusa. Has, has something that I shared today or her energy sh changed how you feel about her, what you were taught about her? Um, what was your impression of her beforehand? And if you enjoyed this, if you enjoyed this, I will be doing more of these with some different goddesses. Um, so go ahead and um, subscribe to my channel so that you can be notified when a new one comes live. And I am sending you so many wise woman blessings. Dear one, thank you, thank you, thank you.